to be able to just make a choice on your own and just be able to speak for yourself. This one's wife. They are deserting her. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Daniela Elsa writes for news.com.au, providing me with a further opportunity to explain the behaviours that are being commented upon. She explains, Gather round, all you aspiring true crime podcasters. I've got the perfect mystery worthy of a 12-part series, deserving of one of those big whiteboards covered in red string. It has all the necessary ingredients, a tragic heroine, swirling forces, and a tale of so much promise dashed. At the heart of this unsolved case, how did this one's wife, the Duchess of Sussex, go from being so in demand and such scorchingly hot property that Netflix turned up with a nine-figure deal to having vultures circling and Hollywood seemingly having abandoned her? Well, before we get more into the body of what Daniela Elsa has to say, I'm going to solve the mystery for you straight away. How did she become such hot property in the first place, given the fact that we know that she's a charisma-free zone with a sense of humour bypass, a fashion disaster, and somebody who has no talent? The fact was that her narcissism caused her to target a dim-witted and susceptible and suggestible prince. By so doing, this enabled her narcissism to harness his profile. It meant that she then became internationally well-known. With that came not only the opportunity to control millions of people and draw fuel from them, very important things for a narcissist, but it gave her access to extensive facade management and, of course, money, the residual benefit. The fact is that as a divorced American who presented as biracial, there was a number of factors about her which were different from the usual individuals that you would find in the royal family. Thus, that was of interest to many people around the world. Furthermore, the fact that she then left, in effect, the royal family only after a short period of time and took her husband with her was also of interest to many people around the world. In addition, what stories would they have to tell? What would they be able to tell the world about her experience? Thus, having accessed the most famous royal family in the world and left after a short period of time, this generated lots and lots of questions from people. Already there were those that had seen through her and were decrying her behaviour as rude, unpleasant, self-serving. There were others that portrayed her as some kind of heroine, that she had come up against the forces of colonial evil, and therefore had decided that she was going to do something about that by getting out and living life elsewhere. Thus, there was much intrigue. How dare you do that? Or, well done you. It polarised people. And thus, that meant that people were invested in what she had to say, what she was going to do next, and where she wouldn't find herself going to. Thus, all of that happening in a short space of time made her very newsworthy and thus led to a flood of deals. The deals weren't offered on the basis of, oh, look, we've got this really intelligent woman who has a track record of creating brilliant content. Sign her up. No. It wasn't the case of, you know, she's a fantastic entrepreneur. She's going to be brilliant in terms of formulating a brand. Look at what she's achieved so far in her life. Let's get her signed up. No, it was simply, goodness me, she came out of nowhere, got into the royal family, and then no sooner had she arrived, she's departed from it. Why? And also, what are the stories that she's got to tell us? What will she be able to explain about what's gone on? 
There must be tons of juicy gossip for her to access. And thus, in the circumstances, this means that she became hot property as a consequence of her story and the potential tales that she might tell, the juicy gossip that she might come out with. At first, this worked for her. She went on the Oprah interview. There were those that decried her, but there were those that supported her. But thereafter, as it became apparent she has no talent, that she's got no charisma, and as more and more people started to understand that she is a narcissist and what that means, as is always the case, and as I've told you so many times, if you give the narcissist enough rope, they'll hang themselves, she started to do more and more and more and more and more, which demonstrated that not only was she a narcissist, but that she was unpleasant, grasping, transparent, unreliable, and a liar. This then meant that brands thought, ooh, don't really want to be associated with her, she's unpopular, could be problematic. Content creators suddenly thought, do you know what? Yeah, we got some stuff at the beginning, but it wasn't as good as we actually thought it would be, and actually, gosh, she moans a lot. It's just a big whinge. It's all about the victimhood. And in the circumstances, we don't want any more of that. It's not a good look. It gets old very quickly, and also it flies in the face of what many people prefer. So, hmm, that's not good content. Let's try and get her to create something else. Oh, dear. Because she's lazy and entitled, she thinks she just be, be, should just be paid for turning up. That then meant that no alternative content was created. Look what happened to RC Wipes. One season, potted. Lemonada, pushed back to next year, nothing created. Netflix, there was the initial Harry and this one's wife thereafter, nothing really of note. They presented a couple of things or put their names to a couple of things, but nothing substantial. Where's the cookery show? Still not appeared. The polo hasn't popped up so far. Meet me by the lake or whatever it's called. Nothing's happened with that. Thus, people realised that there's no talent there, there's no ability, they realised that she's charm-free, and they kept seeing all of the gaffes. And therefore, certain individuals at first saw her as a Janie come lately and never embraced her in the first place. You've not put in the hard yards to be admitted to the Hollywood A-list, so I'm not bothering with you. Other people perhaps gave her an opportunity. Well, we'll suck it and see, probably her mantra, but we'll see how she gets on. And then they've realised that actually she's irritating because she was pestering people, wanting to hook up with them, and she never actually had any genuine credentials, which resulted in her behaving in a particular way, which has irked those Hollywood A-listers, so they've thought, why on earth would I want to bother with her? She's not particularly likeable, and also, I don't want my carefully curated image to be affected by being associated with her. And accordingly, whilst it might have been the case that she showed so much promise in the beginning, as is the case with a talent-free, middle-mid-range narcissist, over time, she just demonstrated what she was, and that has meant that people have run a mile from her. That's what's behind it. I've stated it many times, and I'll state it again. Her narcissism was effective enough to get her into this position, but it wasn't effective enough to keep her in this position. She overexposed herself, and as a consequence of that overexposure, her downsides became exposed time and time again, and she didn't have the appropriate means of dealing with that in a constructive fashion, which then resulted in people seeing her for what she is and saying, I don't like it. Her popularity panned, a brand stayed away from her, A-listers shunned her, and she's found herself deserted. Elsa continues by explaining, For six weeks now, the Duchess has faced a series of devastating takedowns with her mega agent nowhere to be seen, probably realising that basically this is a hopeless case, and neither are A-lists rallying to her defence. 
No man is an island, but the Duchess is looking increasingly forsaken and stranded on an atoll of one. Last week, the latest barrage came from one of the biggest names in American media, famed former Vanity Fair and New Yorker editor Tina Brown. I don't need to repeat what she said, you're familiar with it, but it was another criticism. Elsa then goes on to explain, first, The Hollywood Reporter published a piece based on interviews with 12 current and former staffers, reviving claims of a Sussex Survivors Club, with sources saying that she's just terrible and that everyone's terrified of this one's wife. Again, the allegations are recounted, further threats to control. Hot on the heels of that came other former staffers telling the Daily Beast, Tom Sykes, that she was a demon who had psycho moments as a boss, followed by, yes, another blistering article. A senior Hollywood figure told the Daily Mail's Alison Boshoff that the Sussexes were experiencing schadenfreude with extra venom and that it's hard to find anyone with a good word to say for their film and television credibility. The reaction to all of this? No knights in shining armour have arrived. No steeds have been gallantly galloped into the fray on this one's wife's behalf, despite her supposedly having some of the best representation in the business. In April last year, Ari Emanuel's WME agency, the creme de la creme of Hollywood powerhouses, grandly announced with much fanfare that it had signed the Duchess, bringing with it the promise of fatted calf commercial deals. WME was honoured to represent her in all areas, it posted on X at the time. The focus would be on building out her business ventures. What's happened there? Sweet fuck all. Including film and television production. What's happened there? Sweet fuck all. Brand partnerships, what's happened there? Sweet, fuck all. And more, what's happened there? Jam. Despite this, WME has failed to, so far as been reported, firefight in any meaningful way during this recent barrage. Moreover, the fruit born of this one's wife's union with WME barely amounts to a desiccated raisin's worth. There has not been a single new successfully launched business venture or a brand partnership, let alone any of the elusive more. The Duchess has not inked a single new major deal in that time, aside from joining the books of podcasting company Lemonade Media, not that that pairing has seen anything eventuate. But hey, the market in other economic terms, the post-pandemic budgetary correction has not spared even the titled. Still, as this one's wife told The Cut in 2022, the silent part is still part of the song. The silent part right now is coming across increasingly loudly, with those with industry clout having conspicuously failed in any way to rally for her cause or to come to her defence. There's Emmanuel and WME, whose reaction has been limper than an uncooked sausage. As Boshoff in the Mail noted, the Hollywood Reporter article was just the kind of unflattering hit piece which you might expect the talent agency WME to have strangled at birth for their client, this one's wife. A senior Hollywood publicist told Boshoff, it's really striking that WME did not stop this running. The Duchess did not attend WME's glittering recent post-Emmys party either. Or what of the biggest Sussex booster of them all? Oprah Winfrey happily promoted clever brands of which this one's wife is an investor in the months before the Sussexes handed her the biggest interview of the 21st century so far. And yet, she has remained silent. So too has this one's wife's other big-name friends, such as Serena Williams, and even her former Suits co-stars, usually good for a supportive quote, who have all been on mute. Well, of course, they're all deserting her because, one, they've not been particularly treated well by her, which is, of course, the behaviour of the narcissist, and two, they recognise that she's tainted goods and they're keeping a distance from her. All that early Sussex promise of 20 and 20, 2020 and 2021, when the Duke and Duchess were being fated by time as some of the hundred most influential people in the world, has evaporated faster than spilt milk in the midday California sun. At the recent Children's Hospital Los Angeles Gala, this one's wife walked the red carpet but reported it only stayed for two awards. None of the other celebrity attendees at the event, such as Jamie Lee Curtis or Jimmy Kimmel and his wife Molly McNerney, were seen with her. In July, this one's wife and her Monty shit show neighbour, Jamie Kern Lima, flew via Lima's private jet to the G9 Venture Summit in the Hamptons. Stars to major entrepreneurs like Gwyneth Paltrow and Reese Witherspoon and media heavyweight Diana Sawyer did not pose for any chummy Instagram snappity snaps with the Duchess. 
It gets worse. Page Six reported at the summit that celebrities did their best to dodge being caught in photographs with this one's wife, while an insider told News Nation's Paula Froelich of A-listers like Paltrow, this one's wife can show up at events where they are at, move into their neighbourhood, but they are not friends. Last year, this one's wife attended the LA leg of Beyonce's Renaissance tour and was photographed mingling with Jeff Bezos and his fiancée Lauren Sanchez, Chris Jenner, Kerry Washington, Kelly Rowland, and Netflix supremo Ted Sarandos. None of these chummy seams have been repeated this year. Then there is the Lindbergh Baby of the Sussex story, which is this one's wife's lifestyle brand American Riviera Orchard, announced with some twee insta schmaltziness back in March. Seven months on, not a single pot of anything sticky or sweet is available for purchase, and nor is there a website beyond a bare-bones landing page or even a mooted launch date. As we straggle towards the finish line of 2024, the Sussex brand has never looked more deflated, all the air, all the promise, all the fizz having long gone out of it. In the US, in the last two and a bit years, we have seen, beyond the Hollywood Reporter and the Daily Beast, the Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg and New York Magazine's The Cut publish pieces with unflattering claims about the Sussexes, their high staff turnover and their attempts to make it stateside. It's impossible to write this all off, as they have with other reporting as the work of the toxic British press. Just to really provoke a mind-melting case of whiplash, consider that only five years ago, this one's wife and Harry were still in the royal family, and there was talk of them tootling off to Canada for a wee rest. Thus, Elsa details just how this one's wife has been deserted, and it is a consequence of her narcissism. The way that she has behaved has meant that she has been exposed. And that exposure has meant that the brands don't want anything to do with her, the fashion houses and the cosmetic giants want to stay well away from her. Content creators realise that she's lazy, entitled and talent-free. And all other individuals realise that she basically is a joke person. Nobody is riding to her defence, other than, of course, employees who under pain of shooting, were told to say something positive about her. But the Hollywood heavy hitters, nowhere to be seen. Her agency, silent. Supposed friends, distant. Others, avoiding her. And it's all because people have seen through what she is, and they don't want anything to do with her. The downward spiral which I predicted some time ago ahead of anybody else is coming to pass. Because, as always, with a narcissist of this nature, she hasn't got the ability to keep it all under control and mask her behaviours in the way that superior narcissists have. And she's become exposed. And this is the consequence. Being deserted. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.